Hello everyone, my name is Sergey Piminov. I am a web developer from Kiev, Ukraine. Maybe you know me by the nickname Olden. Before I start, I want to apologize for my English. Currently it is not good, but I work on developing it, and I hope in the near future my English will be better. I will try to speak so that everyone understands me. This is my first video in English, so please don't judge me strictly, and I beg your pardon if I say any words incorrectly. Today I am going to speak about one of my tools for the Mina blockchain, Mina Monitor. It's the first video in the series about Mina and Mina tools. In this video I will introduce you to my tool for monitoring the Mina nodes. Ok, let's start. Why it needs? Making a profit on Mina's blockchain is based on the proof of stake mechanism. To get Mina tokens you must launch the node with the required size of the stake and generate blocks to the blockchain. The very important thing stability of the node. You must control the node state to win slots and blocks. This brings us to the heart of my speech. So, how can we monitor the state of the node? Firstly, it's the usage of the Mina client status command. Secondly, we can use built-in metrics, Grafana and parameters to get graphs for any node state. Third, use the various system utilities to control resources consumption, such as HTOP, CatMem, Info and others. But all these services and utilities is one way or another limit my ability to control the MINA node. In the beginning I used the console command MINA client status to get information about node state, different system utilities to get server resources utilization, and system journals to re read any logs. The main tool for obtaining information about the node state is the MINA client states command. This command is a good one, but it's very boring and not informative enough for me. We can see that this command gives a lot of information, but this information is static. We must rerun to the command to update it. This information is not fully qualified to determine the full health of the node at all. For example, we cannot see if node is hanging or not. We cannot see information about server resources utilization. CPU and RAM usage, network traffic. Maybe, if you are a validator, you want to see information about delegations to your address, total delegated stake and how much you have reward in the current epoch or position in the uptime leaderboard. You cannot see this information by the command MINA client status. I would like to see the updatable price of MINA in different currencies. All in all, I want the node to reboot with minimal loss in time if something doesn't work correctly without my intervention. Of course, we can execute a lot of steps to get information about the node. Open the page uptime minaprotocol.com to get position in leaderboard, run each top to see system resources usage statistics, download the ledger and calculate the total stake, visit guards mina explorer and get information about rewards, or take many more steps to get the information we are interested in. And if we have suspicion that something is wrong with the node, we run a command to restart the MINA service. Too many actions need to be performed to get one result. But to be honest, I am a very lazy person, and I was too lazy to do all these actions, and I decided to simplify my life and to create a MINA monitor. That will collect and show me all this information, even on my TV, control node state, while I just sitting on couch, drinking beer and enjoying my life. We came directly to Mina Monitor. So, Mina Monitor is a client server application for visual monitoring the Mina node, alerting about node problems and automatically restarting the node if needed. Mina Monitor is written using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node.js and consists of two parts, server side and client side. Server side. This model collects information about node, monitors node's health and restarts nodes if needed. Must be running on the same server with Mina. And client side, this model are for displaying the state of a node in the browser. The developer client I used my own libraries, Metro4, Chart.js, DataTime.js. If you are interested, you can find these libraries in my GitHub profile. The monitor server can work separately without running a client. But the client doesn't work without the server-side part. The launch of the monitor is a very simple procedure. 
I am going to talk about configuring and starting a client and server in one of the next videos. Also, you can read about launch options and starting variants in the projects Redmi and how to files on GitHub. Currently, the client has two types of realization. Single node, suitable for ordinary users, included in the repo with server side, and multiply nodes, suitable for users who launch more than one node. Numbered cluster. You can find it in a separate repository. What are the key features of MINA monitor? Monitor client. Display of the main indicators of the MINA network. Block H, uptime, epoch, slot info. Displaying the status of the node daemon, synchet, catch up, bootstrap. Displaying the health of node, OK for hanging. Displaying the server resources utilization by the node, CPU, RAM, network. Displaying the balance of the specific address and the value of this balance in the different currencies. Displaying information about delegations to the specific validator address. Displaying information about von blocks and rewards received in the current poll. Displaying the position in the uptime leaderboard. Displaying the status of several nodes on one page. Convenient leaf graphs for displaying utilized resources. Responsive interface and two color themes, dark and light. Monitor server side. Monitoring node health. Identification of critical node states for hanging node peers and others. Determining the synchronization states of a node. The automatic reboot of the node in case of critical state detection. Sending messages about the critical states of the node to Telegram and or to Discord. Sending the current balance of the specific address to Telegram and or to Discord. Sending MINA scores to Telegram and or to Discord. Controlling the SNARK worker. Using WebSocket connection to inform the client about node state. After launching the first version of the MINA monitor, and the beginning of using it, in my head was born a lot of new ideas on how I can improve an existing code to get new experiences, new useful information from nodes and visualization it. For example, to show several nodes on one page, to show MINA price, to show address position in the uptime leaderboard, and to show information about delegation and rewards. Some ideas led me to the necessity to create a, a special client who is showing several nodes on one page in, informa in information which are said above. This is how the MINA monitor cluster appeared. In the process of working on the cluster, there were also several ideas regarding the server side of the monitor number. Stored node states in the internal cache objects. It, it will stop provoking requests to the GraphQL from the server when the client requests data from the server side. The use of the cached state of the node allows to increase significantly the performance of the server side and the speed of displaying information on the client. The ability to run multiple clients without sacrificing server performance. Improve the work with parameters that determine the time. Now you can set time values as a short string in human, human readable format, instead of a big number of to set the time in milliseconds. The number of character in which you still need to count correctly. Transit from HTTP to WebSockets for data exchange between client and server. We get one stable connection instead of a large number of con constant small requests on HTTP and inform clients when data is ready. Improving the algorithm of for recognizing a hanging node state. Many other improvements were made in work on the server side. As a result, the following functionality was added. Cluster client. Anything that a simple client displays plus. Displaying the status of several nodes on one page. Displaying the resource response rate of a GraphQL node to the main request. Increase and expand information about node uptime. Improvements for displaying mean a price address balance. Extending features for the server side. I reward code to use WebSocket for exchange data between client and server. Now client receives a stored state of the node from the cached objects. I added a snark worker controller to disable snark working before block production and then resuming its work after block producing. I added a checker for monitor memory consumption and reboot node when memory is critical usage. 
I added a model to control Mina Servais tops with journal serial and wrote this event to the log file. One of on if important changes in the extern version is the use of WebSocket for the communication between the client and server parts. Thanks to Alexander and Kifarov for pushing me to this. The transition from HTTP to WebSocket allowed it to reduce the load on the processor both on the client and on the server and to reduce the number of network connections to one full duplex for each monitoring server. So, which one to use? If you are a simple MENA user and launch it one node, you can use a simple client included in the main monitor repository. If you are a validator and want to stay in the top in the uptime leaderboard, you can use a client cluster client because cluster is just more convenient for monitoring multiple nodes under one address. And lastly, this is all that I wanted to say today. I have many ideas for further development. The main thing is to make a full-fledged dashboard to control an unlimited number of nodes with support of different node types. The ability to restart a node remotely via com command in a telegram or in a discord. Interaction between nodes for additional control of the states of nodes. Interaction with the newest API, for example, state tab dashboard API, when this API will be published. This was the first video in the series of videos about MENA Monitor. In the next video, I am going to talk about how to configure and launch the server and the client of MENA Monitor. Thanks to MENA's team for the MENA's blockchain. I really hope MENA Monitor will be useful not only for me, but for all MENA nodeless operators. Thank you for your attention. I finished my speech. Bye, my friends.